One of the first time ever I'm here in Tampa with Big Chef and his posse here tonight. We're going to do a swing makeover Big Chef production tonight. I've got three of the top 40s hitters in the whole Tampa, Central Florida area. We're going to talk about breaking the technique down and of course the chef's going to, he's got the great channel right now moving on. He's going to start giving lessons here so we're going to kind of work back and forth. So welcome aboard brother. All right, thank you. Thank you Boogie. What a, what a group here. I've met all these guys at Woodlawn before, but introduce yourself, say how old you are and where you're from. My name is Chris Johnson. i um, 41. I live in Plant City. i um, been playing softball for a long time, and uh, I look forward to working with both these gentlemen. Same bunch as 43 from Palmetto, Florida. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the rookie here, just old. <laughs> you're, you're, kind of, you're kind of the apprentice of the shop, right? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm, super, I'm, I'm the sous chef. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, the waiter. <laughs> I'm the waiter. And how big are you? You're a big dude. I'm average size with people my size, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Big Chef, aka Mark. Uh, also, my, first, my full name is Marcus Celestine. Big Chef. I got the Big Chef uh, softball channel where we do bad reviews. You trip senior. Just a pleasure to be here with Bogey, man. All right, so for me, it's where I start first. So um, I try to stay shoulder width apart. Um, put some weight on my legs. To the point on my back leg, just to the point to where um, it doesn't hurt as much, but you could still feel the pressure on it. You know that allows me to just get in a nice ready position, so that when that ball gets to you know its peak and it's coming down, I'm able to start generating, moving this. I can start torquing the hip and then getting everything going together. So it's from here to like boom, you know, boom, you know, that's all I'm doing, and then. Everything else comes through. Once I get to that point, my hands are here, and it just kind of uh, bottom hand is almost like a frisbee. Top hand it just helps push. So I'm here, and then that's the snap right there for me. And you bring that back, go to that lag position again. When you get right here, your hip has driven that right. So yeah. Pretty much similar to mine. You've driven the knob towards the bottom plane of the ball. Correct. And, and then when you get here, you just you know, continue to drive with the hip, and that drives the top hand past yeah. the bottom. So, yeah, something you hear me say is, like, I like to always tell people, hands to the ball, you know. So, it, it, in baseball, they, te they teach you to stay inside the ball. In softball, you want to just kind of, like, lead, get your hands to the ball, and then explode. Well, I mean, it's, again, I think for me, the best way to kind of relate it is, is almost to throwing a Frisbee. When you throw a Frisbee, your, your torque isn't like this going back and then coming forward. It's a nice slow torque. So it's almost like a wind up in that position, that ready position, and then like, boom, you know? So I would say in percentage, I would say it's about 50% wind and then 100% going forward. Okay. You know? So That's what people's timing gets off. The right kid is lots of times, don't you yeah. think? Yeah, I've seen a lot of people who will uh, put a lot of emphasis in the wind up where they're like, and everything is just disconnected, the technique or whatever. I think having a nice control wind up and then being able to, you know, explode on a timely manner is more beneficial. I like to call it control violence. Yeah. Well, when you when you do your snap then, to finish up here, when you do your snap, do you feel like it's a, a pure axe snap sideways or do you feel like when you drive your top hand past the bottom, it's a little bit over the top, like a little bit of a tomahawk? What angle do you feel like you go with that? I feel like it's more of like a, I guess this is more of like a sideways, mm -hmm. you know, but that's because I'm trying to keep the bat head as level as I can through the ball, you know. So, like, something I used to do back in the day, um, instead of hitting softballs, I used to hit volleyballs, you know. So it's almost like I kind of train myself to try to hit through the ball. You're not trying to spin a volleyball, you're trying to hit through it, you know. So I think for me, with this top hand, I would say it's more kind of like sideways and then generate. So I always keep my eye on the top of the ball, but... I try to strike, uh, when I'm going for the home run, I'm trying to uh, strike the bottom three quarter of the ball. Yeah. Um, if I'm going, if I'm trying to keep the ball in the park, you know, I'll definitely hit more of the middle of the ball, but I'll do the technique of, you know, like when you see a plane landing, you'll come down and you'll see the plane kind of level off. That's the same bat pass. So if, if I'm doing it on one hand, I'm here, and then I level off. 
address that. Say you got a little pitch, what do you do with it? So what I do is, again, is, is I go get in the hands to the ball, I put some pressure on the front knee, so I'll actually go down and try to meet the ball. So you'll see there was a few clips where a pitch was short and it was low. If I'm in a position to where I'm not hitting a home run, it's an easy ball to drive through the hole, I'm going to go down, get here, and then still try to keep the bat head as level as it is. It's hit. amazing how that you can, if you hit the bottom half, you get that rising line drive yeah. and it never gets more than 10 feet Yeah, the so, you know, to get the ball to travel, you got to generate that backspin, you know. Yeah. Now, if, 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 if you have more of an upward swing, you're just trying to get it over the infield, you could hit that top spin and just get that nice loop over. But for us in the you know in the 40s and in the younger game, that backspin through the infield is more of a harder ball to catch. I don't really, I mean, when I hit it good, I get a drive here, but my it's impatience and being lazy are two of my big problems. I'm always gonna be back here. So I'm gonna have kind of a lean, lean back with my hips so I know I'm loaded already. I don't really come back too much. I just like to come here, step through, and drive. Because I like to stay, I, I really like to stay here and here. I can't open up and close myself up to go there. But when I hit it good, it's like, a, you feel it. It's like one solid motion. Wait back, wait back, wait back, wait back, and then explode into it. That's where I trust my I trust my hands a lot too, because um, my hands are pretty quick. So that's just waiting, waiting. Like I said, it's just waiting on the ball for me. Already back here, and then as I decide to swing, then I just drive through it as hard as, as, hard as I can. Um, and it's like you said, it's too fast to analyze my swing because you know, as we play, and like you said, a lot of the rec guys, they do the the bat waves and the, all this stuff. And, when the pitch is coming in, then they're back here, and then they're here. You're not going to hit a ball good. Just patience is the key in softball. Wait, 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 drop. Um, I think you're not using the tee effective. I think the tee, you, you want to be able to hit that ball as clean as you can off the tee without making contact with the tee and just driving it through somewhere. You know, you don't want to hit grounders. You want to hit line drives. So. Yeah, they, them guys that do the 400 feet off the tee. Yeah. You, that, they, their mechanics are so bad after they, they drop do that. the back shoulder and they yeah. try to elevate yeah, everything way up, you know. Off the tee. Majority of the balls have a stamp on it. So when they have a classic cam or a USA stamp on it, I will set my ball on the tee like this and I'm aiming for this stamp right here all the time. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to hit middle, slightly lower part of the ball and like I said, minimum contact with the tee. Not okay. So I stand not as far as back a chef, but I stand about right here and get it as close as I can I possibly can so the ball is high enough for me. And I'm trying to meet it wherever I can. Like if it's down here, I can't drop my left. I can't do that like chef. Bad knee, military got me. But if I can catch it up here, right here, then I'm gonna try and put it wherever I need to go. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna mislead anyone. I'm the I'm the rookie here. And before I met Marcus, I didn't know what I was doing. It was all power, honestly. I'm, Man, nobody said my government okay. <laughs> before I met Marcus, it was all power. Um he taught me how to Stand back, wait for your pitch. Get your hands, drive through the ball, stop trying to just open up past and talk myself to overlap, hang over, and I get a little bit more whip with it. It was, it was uncontrolled chaos. And now, at least with Chef, it's controlled mayhem. And how long have you guys worked on the swing together? About five, six, seven months. I played with, figured me out already. They know that the high pitch for me it used to be my weakness. So I try and stay away from those um, low pitches right now on, on my danger zone. So I'm getting better at swinging at those, but I can, for the most part, if I want to, I can keep it down and level whenever I want to. But I know like when it's time in a situation where it's time to hit a home run, I know to lean back a little bit more, you know what I'm saying, bite down just a little bit harder and drive it and try and just, we'll say the bottom three fourths of it and try and push right through it a little, try and just give it a little bit more arc for me, that works. So I start back here courtesy of my guy Kobe and whenever I see the pitch coming in I'm leaning back just just a little bit more and whenever I, I'm trying to explode into it For school I was basketball and football then when I was in the military I boxed well what did you do in the military I was an engineer in the Navy and what is what does that mean in layman's terms <laughs> I uh, worked on the ship I worked on uh, the boilers the feed pumps I was the ship well, guy. Thank, you, thank you for your service that's uh, you didn't get seasick 
No, no. Well, don't let Clem in. So, yeah. <laughs> you think about what you're going to offer as far as the lessons. You're going to work one on one with guys, or yeah, I'll probably try to do like some small groups. You know, um, try to help them break down the swing, understanding you know their strengths and weaknesses, and try to utilize what they bring to the table and try to get everyone at their full potential. Um, you know, I think a lot of factors goes into it because there's so many different bats and out there. You know, so I think starting with sure. the bat that matches the person, and then you know. Uh, utilizing some of the basics that you taught as well. One thing that I like about you is, you know, you're like us, Brett and I, you understand the importance of videotaping, and, and people hardly ever videotape their swing, and they think, oh, you, you know, you're you know, you're know, narcissistic if you videotape your swing. No, if you, your perception of what's going on and what's really going on are always different, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like you said, I mean, having a video to go back and review it, I mean, you know, in, in this world that we live in, everything is about data. You know, so to, to build data to see, like, you know, if your hands are dropping or what you're doing wrong on a certain pitch, and you can have that visual and adjust to it and then make the adjustments as well. You know, because a, a lot of, oh, a lot of times you yeah, might feel yourself, you might feel you're doing something wrong, but you can't see it. So when you get that third-person view of seeing what you're doing wrong, then you have that mental conscious of, okay, now I know what I got to do to Woo. adjust it. Pitch selection, I was fussy. I didn't mind walking. And, mm -hmm. and pitch selection becomes so incredibly important. Do you guys spend a lot of time leaving pitches go here when you take BP in a, in a limited group like this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, um, I think one of the first things we talk about is swinging at a good pitch. You know, every now and then um, we always try to train ourselves to swing at a borderline pitch if you don't know if the umpire is going to call yeah, it a strike. Yeah. But, you know, it all, it all starts with swinging a good pitch. You don't want to go out there and swing at everything you see. See what a strike look like, you know, and and see what it, and make the adjustments accordingly, you know. But um, swing swing a good pitches. And it's not not just for power, but I'll bring up you beat San Dan Ch Sanchez in a home run derby here a little while ago. And, and, <laughs> you know, he, and he's a great hitter. But you know, there's a certain pitch you can hit out. 70% of the time, yeah. but sometimes you'll get that low one and you get extended on it and you'll drive it a long way, but the next two times, like for me, I'll swing at the same pitch, I'll be like this, it's a pop-up, yeah. so, you know, you know, I would say from the belly button to here is a good zone for most people, mm -hmm. whether you're hitting for home runs or whether you're hitting line drives, oh, yeah. what, do you, what do you find, where's your zone? Oh yeah, my, 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 my buddy, uh, Tony Willingham, he always to uh, taught me, he was like, titty to belly button. You know, and yeah. from right here, this is the zone, you know, so... Um, you can't I, say that now if you have, if you have women in the camp, you can't say <laughs> yeah. anymore, you know? uh, uh, Okay, but for chest and belly button... Boobies, <laughs> boobies, boobies, okay, yeah. But, you know, that's my shout-out for Tony Willingham. <laughs> but, you know, from bully, you know, right here, this is your hit zone. You know, yeah. this is probably the zone where you're going to get, you know, the most impact, most power, get it fully extended, and you can drive the ball. And, and you don't have to do a lot to elevate the ball. Just by having a nice launch angle here and coming through, you can drive the ball on the line that could leave the park in a hurry. Well, you guys did a great job. I think we're all on pretty much the same wavelength as far as technique. Technique, good practice, good pitches to hit at. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been awesome. I think Man. it's going to help the guys out a lot. I'm a big fan of the... Uh, of the of the kitchen kitchen of the, <laughs> the channel, so I'm like, excited to, to work with you down the road and see where, where you take well, it from here. I'll tell you, man, I'm, I'm humble because I, you know, I've learned a lot from your videos. So, um, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, a lot of stuff that we're doing and stuff that I've learned from your videos 10, 12 years ago. So it's humbling to you be said, here. You said that just the way I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. <laughs>